Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Glad that all of you are here. We welcome those who are worshiping with us online as well. So a reminder that this service is being live streamed to our Facebook page. It's being recorded to be posted online too. So online worship is always an option. Um, Those of you who are worshiping online, you can get the bulletin from the weekly email. If you don't get that, you can contact us and let us know so that we can get you that information if you want it. Um, All of you in the sanctuary have your paper bulletin with you to participate in worship if you would like to. You also have your announcements, so please take time to read through that. Remember, like, our academic year schedule is happening, like, everything all now. So Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon Bible studies, Wednesday night choir, Wednesday night confirmation, Sunday school, Sunday mornings, all of the things, all of the Tuesday quilting and pick your project and Thursday fidget mats. So lots of stuff going on. Um, if you have any questions about any of them or you want to like check it out or maybe try something different or new, you can let me know and I can like point you in the right direction of the person to talk to who can help you out with that. I would like to highlight the fall worship assistance announcement. Um, we are always looking for folks who can do reading, ushering, helping serve communion, and then also um, to help with the live stream tech stuff. So you can indicate on your bulletin tear-off and put that in the offering plate if you're interested in doing any one of those. You can also click on the Sign Up Genius link that's in the weekly email to be taken to the sign up for that. If Sign Up Genius is not your thing and you forget to do the tear-off to indicate that, you can call Carrie or email her in our office and we'll get you figured out and signed up for the things you want to help out with. So I think you get the idea. There's lots of ways um, to sign up to help out. And then if you've never done it before, we will train you or partner you with somebody who can help train you so that um, you could serve in that way. So thank you for considering that. Um, the Lutheran World Relief school kits, the supply list is in there. We're going to get ready to assemble the school kits in October, which is like tomorrow, Tuesday. Um, so that day, I think it's the third Sunday in October, but uh, we'll get that information out to you soon as far as if you want to come help assemble the school kits, but we always need supplies for that. The Welka group does, so thank you for for um, donating those supplies. Um, I do have the sad news to share. I know most everybody um, heard about this, but that Dave Berglund passed away on Monday of this last week, and services for Dave were yesterday here at St. Peter, and it was a time of fellowship and tears and laughter and remembering the life of a man who will be greatly missed, who I expect to walk in the doors right now, um, because he was always there and always loving people, always supporting everybody, and Um, So we will miss Dave, and we pray for his family um, in these days ahead. And for all of us, too, right, who will miss him as well, as he just was a powerful, faithful member of this faith community. So we give thanks for his life and and keep his family in our prayers. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for being with us, for meeting us where we are. Some of us come with heavy hearts or joyful hearts, However we are, God, we know that you are with us. We give you thanks for the life of Dave that he shared with us. We give you thanks for the opportunity to share God's love with him in our world. We also give thanks for the hope that we have in the resurrection and the new life we have in Christ, which we know Dave is experiencing now. Be with this time we have together now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to take a deep breath to center yourself during this time of worship as we begin. And I invite you to stand for the confession and forgiveness. We begin our worship in the name of the Creator and of the Redeemer and of the Sustainer. Amen. Amen. Holy God, you gather us together as your people. We are created to be brave in the face of our fears. Help us, remind us of your mercy, hear our broken words. For the days we are afraid to show up, forgive us. For the days we are afraid to speak up, forgive us. For the days we are afraid to welcome someone others have ignored, forgive us. For the times we are afraid to tell our own story or listen to someone else tell theirs, forgive us. For the times we are afraid to be honest, forgive us. For the times when we are afraid to challenge what is accepted, forgive us. For the times we are afraid to follow you, Dear friends, God created you to be loved, to tell the truth, 
to be free to live the fullness of this life God offers you. By God's grace, you have been saved from every broken promise, every assumption of privilege, every ignored invitation. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead, the love of God, who created us to be hope in a broken world, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, who inspires our hearts to life, be with you all.
Let us pray. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please be seated. The first reading for this morning is from the book of Psalms, chapter 19, beginning at verse 7, read responsively. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Word of God, word of life. The second reading for the morning is from the book of James, chapter 5, beginning at verse 13. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? Then they should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being just like us, and he prayed fervently that it, fervently that it might rain, might not rain. And then for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. And then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Word of God, word of life. This is the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ, will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, 
but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So one of the things I forgot to say during the announcements was like confirmation students, there's a handful of you here today. Like remember to sign out, like put your name on there and check the confirmation student box and then put your takeaway on the back, right? You guys remember to do that? My are not in confirmation anymore because you confirm, but you could do it for fun. Just saying. Do you come to help out for confirmation? Any of you really could do it. You could put your takeaway on here and that'd be nice. You can also just draw a picture. You don't need to use words. You could draw a picture of your takeaway, like some hearts and crosses or whatever. That'd be fine. You just put it in the offering plate, and then I have like, you know, that's good. Um, because I'm just stalling. Because did you catch my tone and the thing with the words? Yeah, so some weeks as a pastor, I read the gospel reading, and then I'm just like, huh. And I sigh. And I wish that we didn't use this thing called the Revised Common Lectionary for our readings. You've heard me talk about it before, probably. The Revised Common Lectionary is a three-year cycle of readings that we and a lot of other churches around the world, we rotate through these readings. So the idea of using that is that, like, otherwise you guys just, like, hear my favorite scriptures all the time. And so this is kind of, like, to hold us accountable, to hear the stories of God's love for us in different ways. And every now and then... I read a scripture and I wonder what those liturgical scholars and those denominational representatives were thinking when they put that scripture into the lectionary rotation to read. And now usually those particular scriptures, like they only make me sigh every like three years when they come up because it's not every year that we read these really tough ones, which is a good thing, I guess, because then I don't have to sigh about it every year, just every three years, but still, like it's been a hard week. It's been a hard week because yesterday we had a funeral for Dave who was the best person ever. And we shared stories, we cried, we laughed. We heard the words of God's promise that always hold on to us in this life and in the next. And it was hard. It's been a hard week. And I know a lot of you are struggling with a lot of things in your lives. Things are hard for a lot of us. Just things going on, right? We want to come to church to hear words of hope and peace and love. We want to come and be filled with the good news that we are loved children of God. And even though this gospel reading is disturbing and graphic, the good news that we are loved children of God is still in there for us to hear. The words we hear for today in our gospel reading, they're pretty disturbing. Like, I'm not going to, I'm going to say, like, like the kids in the room. I'm like, I don't know, can I say these things? Like Jesus uses graphic imagery, right? Cutting off hands, plucking out eyeballs. Like, and he's using this graphic imagery and these words to make a point. He's using hyperbole. So that means that he's exaggerating. It isn't meant to be taken seriously, but there's reason why he uses such harsh language when he's talking to the disciples. He wants people to pay attention because he's telling something very important. He's telling them something very important. So The words and the images he uses definitely make us pay attention, right? Now, the story we hear today, this one, it's a continuation of the story we heard from last week. Last week, we heard about how Jesus was traveling on the road with his disciples, with his followers, and when they got to the house where they were going, Jesus asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? He knew they were arguing about something. But when he asked them that, they were silent Because on the way, they were arguing with one another about who was the greatest. And in the story last week, Jesus redirected them with this new version of greatness. Jesus said, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. And in those words, Jesus gave people this new concept of greatness. That greatness wasn't about power or authority or wealth or strength, but greatness was found in humility and being selfless and acts of service to others. And last week I was drawn to this image that while the disciples may have been traveling on the way with Jesus, they were actually standing in the way of Jesus. Because in all their arguing about greatness and being concerned with themselves, they lost sight of what the kingdom of God was really about. And it doesn't really seem like this story this week is really getting any better in this, with this gospel reading because the continuation is the followers are not only standing in the way of Jesus still, but they are being called stumbling blocks to others. 
So we hear that the disciples, they tried to stop someone who is not part of their group from helping others. And when they did that, they were failing to recognize the possibility that God could be working outside of them, outside of their inner circle. They were only interested in themselves, and they were missing the point that God can indeed work through others. So Jesus is pretty clear, saying to them that they ought to pay attention to how their own actions and behaviors are leading people to Christ, and that even something as simple and insignificant as giving a glass of water in the name of Christ will be noticed by God. So that's something we can think about this week. How do our actions and behaviors lead people to Christ? How do even the simple, simple things that we do reflect the love of God? Because we hear today that if we are not leading people to Christ and reflecting the love of God, if we are standing in the way or if we are a stumbling block, then things get complicated, right? It leads to Jesus saying some harsh words to make a point. And I don't like to hear it. I don't like his tone or his temperament. It makes me feel uncomfortable, and I would rather just skip over it. But as a follower of Jesus, these words are meant for me too, and they are meant for you. Jesus is not telling us to actually like cut off our hands or pluck out our eyes. He's certainly not telling us to do that to other people as a punishment for their misdeeds. Nowhere else in scripture does Jesus advocate for this kind of punishment. It's just not a thing. And there's no evidence here for harsh judgment of anyone but yourself. So the author of the Gospel of Mark is clearly talking in the second person. Like, that's like, you know, first, second, like me, I, you, they. My English teacher taught us a little hand motion to remember. Like, second person is you, you all. So when Jesus is making it clear in these verses that's about you, you are responsible for your own actions, and you have to take responsibility to protect others. That's what the second person means in this scripture. So Jesus is saying, if your hand causes you to stumble, if it steals something, don't blame the thing. It's like it might be tempting to take something from an organization that doesn't have good procedures or securing their accounts or something. Don't take that and then blame them. Because your actions are not their fault. Jesus tells us to do better. He says it's your responsibility to make the right decision to be honorable. And then he goes even deeper with it. He says if you can't control yourself, you have to take responsibility to protect others because they can stumble because of your actions. So basically as followers of Christ, we must stop doing the things that we know deep down we're not supposed to do. You could say that it's our duty to protect others from our worst self. And this is the opposite of victim blaming, claiming that it's someone else's fault. It's all about personal responsibility and accountability that takes our own actions and life seriously so that there might be peace. Peace in our communities and our personal lives, peace in our homes, our schools, our churches, peace in the world. Peace in the community is the highest good here. Jesus says it at the end of the reading, be at peace with one another. So Jesus gets personal. He doesn't start with others. He starts with us, with you. And he gets really fired up with his followers when they start pointing out problems with others who are supposedly not part of their circle. So Jesus is talking to the disciples here, not the crowd. He's talking to the church at large. He's talking to us. We have to exist for the good of others, for the good of all people. Last week we heard about how our greatness is and will always be connected to our service to others. And we have so many good examples of that, of how to live out that love in our lives, right? To serve others. We can look at people like Dave. We can look at so many of us in this room, those who are worshiping online, people who show us what it means to love our neighbors. Because marked by the cross of Christ and the waters of baptism, we are God's children forgiven and loved beyond measure. So we can let our words and our actions be a witness to God's love in the world. We can let our, live our lives in witness to the kingdom of God that is just full of love beyond our imagination. We know that God is working in our world to make all things new. And you, loved and forgiven children of God, you are part of that work. 
You are part of God's redemptive, loving, and renewing work in our world. It's a gift, but it can also be a great responsibility. I never leave you with anything like that. (laughs) I leave you with the words that you are loved children of God, loved and forgiven children of God. So when we started out and I was stalling, I mean, I stalled, I don't know, did anybody time me? Six minutes? We worked through the hard stuff, people, right? It always comes back to being loved children of God because we have this work to do. We have responsibility to take for ourselves. In the end, it always comes back to we are loved children of God. So put that in your heart and take that with you today. Remember that you are loved children of God. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and for all who are in need. We pray for the people of God in all places. Shape our witness to the good news of Jesus that we joyfully share your transforming love with all whom we encounter. Hear us, O God. We pray for peace and cooperation among local and global communities. Bless the efforts of community organizers, international aid workers, and all those who work for justice and peace around the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who are in any need, to all who grieve, bring consolation, to all who are weary or lonely, bring solace. We pray for all who are impacted by Hurricane Helene. By your grace, make your presence known among all who call to you for healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for caregivers, 
doctors and nurses, home health aides and counselors, and those who care for loved ones, sustain them in their work. Hear us, O God. We give thanks for the saints who now rest in your eternal presence, especially Dave, and thanksgiving for their lives of faithful service and witness, we commend them to your loving care. Hear us, O God. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us that we have everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, The table is now ready. It is a table of company with Jesus and all who love him. It is a table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is a table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. All is ready. Please be seated. If you are worshiping online and receiving communion, I invite you to get your crackers, your bread, your wine, your grape juice prepared. If you are receiving communion in your pews with your little cups, I invite you to get those out. You can peel off that top layer of the cup that goes to the wafer. You may eat that wafer. If you're worshiping online, you may eat your bread or your crackers. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. You can peel off the next layer of the cup that goes to the grape juice. And if you're worshiping online, you may drink your wine or your grape juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
If you are worshiping with somebody who has not yet received the sacrament and would like a blessing, I invite you to make the sign of the cross on their forehead or in the space in front of them and say the words, you are a loved child of God. If you would like to come forward to receive the sacrament, I invite you to follow the instruction of our usher. I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We bless one another to go out in service to God in our world with the Franciscan sending prayer. So I invite the organ side to start us off. May God bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, follow Jesus. Thanks be to God.